welcome back again. I've got a puzzle for you. Most of us are reasonably happy with the answers we have so far. The flat earth seems to be holding up well, so I ask you to think back to the globe for a moment. The sun has been set rather nicely at the centre of the solar system, and its path between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn has been accommodated by tilting the Earth's axis relative to the Sun. Once a year, regular as clockwork, the Sun seems to move from one to the other and back again. So let's turn our thoughts to its partner in the sky, the Moon. Again, it appears most nights and we take it for granted that it does what it does. So I have a question for you. How fast does the Moon travel around the Earth? Most of us have lived with the commonly held belief that it takes about 28 days, and it seems about right. We've all heard about the lunar month, and it seems like a good idea, but when did you last take a good long look at the Moon? Most people think that the Moon takes a month to travel around the Earth, and that it travels west to east. After all, each night it's further east than the night before. But rather than checking from one night to the next, how about going out and watching it for a couple of hours in one night? Do you notice something? Yep, it's going the other way. The Moon actually goes round the Earth in a little over 25 hours, slightly longer than a solar day and so it seems to lag behind the sun. We've all heard the old stories about the tortoise and the hare used to describe how one is slower than the other. So the appearance that the moon is travelling in the opposite direction to the sun only occurs when we're too impatient to watch the moon for a few hours. Alright so far? Here's the kicker. The moon also travels from Cancer to Capricorn and back again, but it does so in one month. Yeah, go and take a closer look. Did you ever wonder why the moon moves north and south over the month and then comes back again? It's kind of smart, but let's not let it slip under the radar. If you've got your head around flat earth, this shouldn't phase you too much. It really is no different to what we know of the sun's movement, except that it does it every month rather than once a year. Give this one to the Globers and see what they make of it. They're still not sure where the moon came from, so don't hold your breath, but from a global point of view, it looks like this. By the space of one month, the moon moves from here, to here, and back again. Don't take my word for it, go check it for yourself. If you go to timeanddate.com and step through the day by the hour, you'll see it for yourself. It's slightly slower than the sun. You can then watch it over the next month and you'll know where it's going from day to day. Once you see how fast the moon moves around the earth, the moon phases reflecting sunlight are senseless. For the globe, the moon mimics the movement of the sun, and there's a big difference. The movement of the sun is claimed to be caused by the tilt of the axis of the globe relative to the sun. The moon has no such claim to rely on. Any claim that the tides affect the moon mean nothing to any of this. There is no correlation between the tides and the tropics. The tides just don't change that fast or as regularly, it simply doesn't work anymore. So there you go, a riddle to be figured out. Take it to the globe, see what it makes of it. They're surprisingly quiet on the matter. On a globe, it has no explanation. The link between the tides and the moon is on life support. Maybe this warrants a closer look. Thanks for watching.